Hello guys, um, sorry it's been such a long time since I've done a video for you, um, that was because I've been trying to grow him out a bit more and I was also waiting for my new tool which is what we're going to work with today. Now that is a Undis um, fine tooth rake which um, lovely somebody sent me from California, thank you very much as I can't get this in um, UK, not sure about Europe, you can try to have a look. Basically, it, it's uh, similar than the Andes normal rake or the old style handle, except it has a lot more teeth. Um, you can see how many more teeth it has. And I have tried to use this already on one super soft coated uh, golden. Um, it worked wonders because it gripped a coat really well where this didn't. Um, and also used it on a golden retriever after a bath. Once his coat was nice and sleek, make sure I don't damage his top coat. Uh, since golden retrievers are a lot thick coated as he was a show dog and it worked fabulous as well. So um, I'm going to give it a quick go on the super soft area, slightly like elbows, a bit of a shoulder there. Um, and um, then I'm going to do the rest once he's been bathed and uh, dried nicely. Uh, he's looking a bit of a mess. We can also have a go here at the head. You can see he only grows very few little hairs on there which are quite satisfying to pluck out um, but this rake also worked really well this fine tooth one on the Gordons that have really curly thick top knots so um, let's have a go quickly um, normally his head is so fine here it's best to do it by fingers uh, you can go in every direction when you pluck in the head. Uh, the hair will never sit in the wrong direction because it's short. Short hair only sits in the direction it's meant to be. Uh, but you grip more if you go sideways backwards. So we got most of his litter junky top knot out, which uh, we can then fine-tune once he's been... Uh, uh, bath. Now we can have a look at his elbow. Now he, I haven't done, I've cut his feathers down in, um, oh this is very good for the elbows. Um, we are plucking some out. Again he only has very fine hair here uh, which are easily plucked by hand um, but it's gripping quite nicely. Can you see? It's blacking out loads. Um, if we compare it with the regular Andes, uh, let's have a look. Near turn, turn. If we have a look on the other elbow, now this is the normal rake. It's still taking some quite well, but not as much as the fine tooth one. So definitely if you can get hold of the and this fine tooth um, the shedding rake uh, in America you can get them or if you live in Europe or UK and you have friends uh, in America ask them to send it for you it really is brilliant and I'm gonna do some Irish soon as well and I'm sure that's going to work wonders for the Irish setters as well um, they're normally not easy to strip, there's not a lot wants to come out of the Irish setters, unlike the Gordons where you can really pluck out tons of hair from them. So I'm just going to leave that because we'll pluck that, but it works really well. But I don't want to run it down his top coat, he has really nice um, jacket which you'll see um, once he's dried. and. Um, We'll come back after he's dried, clean, and then we'll have a go at this rake because, and the reason why I know he needs doing desperately, it's because he's shedding really badly. Um, I'm constantly hoovering, the house is full of hair, and he hasn't been done for five months, so that just about makes sense why he's dropping so much hair. His coat is really ready to be stripped and plucked. 
um, and get, get it under control. So I'll see you soon after the bath. Hello guys, so we're back. Um, Neo is now bathed and dried, looking uh, quite fluffy. Um, and we're going to use the, I'm gonna show you how well this um, and these um, fine tooth rake works. So he hasn't had nothing done to him for five months. There's a lot of junk there. Um, he had most of his feathers cut off at that time in November, five months ago. So we've done very little. And um, here we go. So he's done some of his head and nothing will come out there. It will come down his neck. I'm probably just going to do one side so we can compare. And he's taking out really loads. He's got tons of coat that is ready to come out. Um, hopefully he's not going to spin around too much. Now to, his, he gets a clipped neck, but this is really overgrown. So the sides of the neck that come down this way, I'll strip it. And the better you strip it, the easier than you have. Um, have it to clip the uh, blend in the clip line into the side of the neck. Uh, so we'll put his ear up, and we're gonna. He grows tons of hair on his neck where I don't need it. I would like much more hair somewhere else, but hey ho, there you go. So we're going that way in. A lot of that's going to be clipped and scissored. He does grow a very thick mane, look, it's bringing out tons of hair, really easy, even though he's um, been freshly bathed and his hair is very sleek um, and not the most grippy, but this tool works really well on the bath coat as well for those who do grooming competitions on setters and spaniels, where you have to work on the bath dog always stretching the skin. Going to run down middle back. And I tend to go as much as keeps coming, as long. Certain things you have to plug by hand. This is, this tool is really good to um, sort of debulk so then you don't have to kill your fingers if you don't do it regularly enough. Uh, we can come down, yeah, I know, nobody likes elbows. There you go, not much. This is probably better to do. We can run side of his leg there. And can you see, to get that really nice definition. There's not a lot to take out there. do some on the elbow because if you leave too much on the elbow show dogs when they move them they look like the elbow out even if they don't so we don't want too much on there right now we're going to come down his chest there's got a lot of, lot of little fuzzies here on the side so some of that's going to come out because we don't like that Better to have less coat but nicer coat than uh, leaving too much hair and it's not a nice quality. But this part is better to hand strip with fingers for a bit more fine tuning and better grip in there. I'm going to come down his, not too low down here because I'm waiting to see what grows. Now he's been bathed in MD10, Silky Smooth, um, which is my go-to show range on Setters and Spaniels and even Golden Retriever because it makes the coat. The reason I really like this one is because it keeps the texture really nice. Setter shouldn't be soft and woolly and fluffy and a lot of Silky Smooth products out there I found softened the coat too much. I'm not going too low in his thigh, but you could already see a nice definition. And if we're turning round, Neil, turn, turn, turn. Stay good boy. Very handy 
and you can see there's a little bit of less on this side. So it works really well. Now we're going to show you down his back we haven't done. Look out the window. Sit. There you go. Can you get the back of him? We'll turn him over a bit. There you go. And we'll go down and you can see how nice his coat is. And it's really just pulling a loose coat and a bit of fluff that's there, but quite a lot. Um, but you can hear it's not ripping the coat out when you're running it through or not shredding the coat. Um, he has a very good, easy coat. There's not a lot to do on him. Um, and he is castrated, um, fully neutered, full castration for over a year now. And prior to his full castration, he had chemical castration for two and a half years. His coat never changed. Um, it's always been like this. Uh, never had any reactions to it. Uh, he's a much nicer boy when he's uh, not controlled by his testosterone, but he's a really good boy anyway. He was a quite easy entire male, but he's been a pet. That's not going to be bred. Uh, there is no need to uh, keep his balls and his attitude, uh, which now we don't have. He's a lovable lump now and uh, we don't have no coat problems although I was prepared to deal with a more difficult coat but I don't think um, it's the um, cause uh, well it didn't cause absolutely any difference his coat is exactly the same as it was lace flat um, you can see which side we done stop turn this way yeah, no, he's watching the rain. He's really horrible. So we've got this much just with the rake. And there's not a lot to do. I don't take out too much of his screw. But as you can see, it comes down a little bit. So I like a bit of padding on there. Let's stay. Right, so that was done with the rake. Um, highly recommended it's really brilliant um, if you can't get hold of the fine tooth one even Andy's regular tooth one you can have a look again the difference in the teeth density in them um, this one works really well as well but you see now it, this one's not gripping anything uh, whether this one is still taking coat out so, uh, and we don't want too much on it, uh, on him. And that will stop the shedding and the constant hoovering. And we're just going to tidy up that by hand. And I will probably make that in another part. Um, I'll use, I'll just tell you here, we use these little money counting grippy fingers from Amazon. Uh, I don't know if you can see, they're really, really good. And they're quite long as well. So they cover most of your fingers. And my favourite tripping stone by Designer Dog, spelled D-E-Z-Y-N-A-D-O-G, Designer Dog. A stripping stone, they're a couple of pounds in England and they're absolutely brilliant because they don't leave dust and um, they don't brittle and it's quite sharp and rough um, so it grips really well but it doesn't leave powder in the dog um, which is really good so we'll just have a look here finish up his head a little bit, he doesn't have much more so on the sides because I don't like to strip the head too tightly because I'm, uh, it's, uh, we don't want to create a super flat skull which we um, sort of have because he just doesn't have much hair to pet out his skull uh, to make it slightly rounded like it should be but by taking out the sides there 
um, that can give you a little bit better and a skull shape. Very individual on each dog who's got what head. He's got lovely head, but he's lost a lot of the muscle, his facial muscles. He kind of looks like an old boy, and he's not. He's uh, only seven. I'm not sure where did that go. We'll leave his neck. Um, now we can have a look at his shoulder there. You can see he really pulls loads of hair out. This mane needs to, it's, he grows quite a thick mane, like a golden retriever. And you can see there's no white dust in his coat. So that's what we do. Well, this mane needs to be stripped really regularly and often, which I don't do. This is why it's grown out of control a bit. And he's got these waves in here. That, you would get rid of it if he stripped every couple of weeks. Eventually, this would be gone, you see. They're quite hard to strip out. He tolerates it really well. He doesn't mind it. None of the dogs really mind it. Even though it looks like I'm pulling quite hard. They've got pretty tough skin there on the body, so it's not sensitive area like the elbows. We're not going to make it perfect because we've not done it often enough. Oh. Um, and you see, I'm teaching my big heavy setters to lift themselves up and stand up and turn when I need them to. So they work for me on a table. It's a big dog to handle physically. So they can be taught to do what we want them to do. Instead of me walking around the table to the other side, he can turn around for me, or he will lay down, or, or sit, or, or stand, or whatever I need. Now we'll pluck this junk out of here, so it comes really nicely with this stone. We're getting tons out. Good boy. It's been absolute pouring down with rain all day. So we decided to do this instead of going out for a walk because he doesn't like to go out in the rain. He kind of walks out the back door, has a look, okay, it's raining, I'm going back to bed. So he's going to be really nice and tired later on and he's going to sleep well like a baby. Yes, you will, won't you, baby? Right, so you can see, and then there's really fine tuning here. I'm not going to do all of it, and just to give you an idea how do we finish up a dog after it's been bathed. But can you please not sit on my brush? Up you get. Good boy. So we'll see what we've got here. This is a little bit tricky bit here. It sticks out quite ugly there, but if I strip it out, I might have to just let it grow, and then the weight of the hair will pull it down. Because he, he gets a bald patch there if I take out too much. He doesn't have a lot of hair there, that's behind the elbow there. But this can come out. I know, I know. He, he does have dancing feet, so he does like to... Please don't bend like a pretzel. You can see his natural line forming there. That needs to come out a little bit. Stay. And we want to strip out from up the waist and down towards the elbow to show off a deep, deep rib cage on a sitter, which they're supposed to have. So we don't want to have a straight line here with the feathers. We want feathers to come down a little bit. How much? That depends on each dog and what sort of hair they grow there. The more coat they grow higher up, more you've got to play around with. He doesn't grow nice hair on his ribs it's, um, much anyway. And when it grows, it's just like a brown junk. It's horrible. It needs to come out. 
Um, his coat is very much like Irish setter, in a way very easy, and he grows hair in places. He's very not a typical Gordon that I deal with, um, which is easy for me since I don't have much time for him. Irish are much easier. If you guys love setters but don't want a Gordon because it's too much to groom, and it is, Irish are a lot easier. I don't know about English. Um, I can imagine they would be a bit easier. I don't know. So here we go. I'm getting some mouth full of hair. And then we'll fine tune a bit of that. We're we'll growing this back. I'm not sure what we'll do here, so we're going to leave it for now. So that was the Undis Ray, clear quick hand strip. Um, we haven't done his front yet. That's usually easily plucked. Um, right that way to create a nice, expose the, the shoulder, especially if they have a really nice front, which he has. Um, so we don't cover that in hair, unless you have got a bit of a straight in the front then you don't have to expose the shoulder um, that he has. He's got this his point of shoulder right there, and he has got a really good front angulation and a nicely filled in front, um, and nice and wide. So I want to show that off, and which is why we're taking, you can sit now. There you go, he's getting a bit fed up, he's standing. And here I just very gently take out layer by layer and move in. Can you see? Now we're sitting, you can you can see his shoulder muscle. Um, and how much we take out, we'll just go, like I said, bit, bit by bit. Um, sometimes I can you can scissor here as well. It blends in really easily and you get away with it on a Gordon, um, not on an Irish. Irish is a bit more trickier and they don't like the shoulders exposed in this country on an Irish even if they have got a good front, so. And here around the point of shoulder, we don't strip that out, that needs to be scissored when we scissor his neckline, because that becomes part of feathering, um, which means you'll just create a bold patch if you strip it. Uh, so that needs to be scissored there, we don't go some of this around the upper arm. But again, until I set his neck, because at the moment he's so overgrown, we basically, well, his neck is coming right from, from, from his chin, so that all will be done. And then I'll know how much to take out here. But there we go. So that is um, finished with the Andis Rake. Um, he's got a quick drying job, nothing too much. Um, since we're not going anywhere, and he'll be muddy tomorrow. Um, and his coat's come out really nice. I can maybe bring that a bit closer for you. And that's his coat after the end of Swake. Up. Near up. Good boy. Yeah, that's it. Just kick the stuff off my table. And there we go. A little bit more up front. Really quickly a job on his coat. Brilliant. Thank you guys for watching. I hope um, you found this helpful and I will be back with just finishing off his trims with uh, in the part three with minimum commentary since we covered all of the topics. He just needs basically like a pet sorting out because it's too overgrown. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.